To find a replacement for the transistors, it would be nice to uh, have them work on my curve tracer. Uh, but this one doesn't work, so I need to re repair the curve tracer before I repair the data I.O. Okay, good news, I repaired my curve tracer. I'll make a video of how I did it, but it wasn't uh, majorly bad. Uh, this is the transistors I took out of the uh, data I.O. and which uh, tested good at the at 100 gain and uh, it shows that it's a very good transistor. So the way I'm set up here, this is a 10 volt per division, so this is uh, up to 80 volts. Uh, right here, actually 90 volts, and so shows no sign of, of breakdown. So this is a good Pi transistor. And uh, this is the one that was showing no gain. And you can tell it definitely has a problem. It's actually a short circuit. I'm pretty much close to that. Uh, so, good. I found at least one part that was bad. Uh, the bad news is I am not very rich uh, in uh, a replacement high voltage transistors, uh, high voltage high power. So I looked up this one, and this one I hope would do. And it starts good, it has actually more gain. Uh, the problem is it's rated at 40 volts, and you can see that at 50 uh, it breaks down. Uh, and I hope there was a little bit more margin. Uh, but that won't work because the maximum voltage is 9 plus 48, so that will ex exceed that in the circuit. So, eh, can't use it. Okay, guys, wait a second. I looked at my box and it was one more NPN here. Um, and I looked it up D1585, and that's promising. It says it's a 100 volt transistor. Uh, so that. Okay, gain is exactly the same. Uh, it's not quite the 100 volts. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 70, 80. But that, that's good because there is no more than 60 volt in the circuit. So, oh, I think I can use it in the uh, as a replacement in the data I.O. Okay, that's a bit of an acrobatic repair because the bigger transistor I replaced the original one with uh, didn't quite fit is the original transistor is my bigger one and it's a little bit lower voltage and but we'll see if that's enough to bring it back to life okay a new transistor let's see what happens now oh that's good so now it's not 48 volts anymore uh, the DAC took over and regulated it at zero. So I believe that supply works. Uh, let's have it go through self-test and take a few seconds, remote mode. Okay, select C1, start, first step, and boom! There we go. Now we have a control voltage. Okay, uh, let's see the, yep. Then it goes off, and I guess in the next few steps, there's some steps where it's 5 volts. So I have to recalibrate the thing. But I certainly corrected a fault here. Good. So the transistor goes in the pile of bad vintage parts. Bad transistor. Okay, now it's time to connect the uh, data I.O. to an old computer. Okay, so let's try to uh, actually program a device with a real file uh, so data load RAM from file and I have two prompts to burn and they are the update for the programmer itself at least for the unit pack so prompt one that's all good it's a, in a weird format Motorola whatever and it's doing it so right now it's just transferring from the computer to the RAM.
Okay. And now let's try to burn process devices. Select process. Then check. A little bit check. Program. Verify. Okay. Sounds like a good. Uh, okay. Start. In progress. And I guess there is not much we can see except that this is uh, blinking. The little wheel is turning over there. And well, that's not too good. It failed, uh, and we don't know why. So I think I have a bigger problem than uh, I thought. Um, if I try to program any chip, and I've tried like five of them, uh, I get a program fail error no matter how much I try and then uh, it doesn't even seem to touch the device if I do a blank check that's a new one let's try again blank check Uh, chip is still blank. Uh, so something's wrong with my programmer.